There are two ways to not get caught in a bear market drop at the end of a bull market. One of them is using predictive methods to predict the top. And one of them is using reactive methods to react to bearish price action at the top before the bull market gets too far underway. Now, we've looked heavily at predictive methods in previous videos. We're going to look at them again today, so don't worry about that. But we're also going to look at reactive methods, right? I think reactive methods are much more useful in this particular cycle because right now what we're seeing is we're seeing deviations from established macro trends. Trends like the four-year cycle theory, which is a predictive method for predicting the top of a bull market, are becoming less and less useful. So we need to rely a bit more on reactive methods. When this thing happens on this chart that I'm going to show you today, that is how you'll know the top is in. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. We're going to get into the video, but before we do that, let's check out the VIP group chat on Telegram. Uh, with the group chat, you'll also get access to the trading signals as well as a discussion group. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. 78.52% uh, win rate on the signals. We then have the VIP uh, exchanges, which I actually sponsor on the YouTube channel as well, which are BitGet and BingX. BingX is global non-KYC. BitGet is global KYC minus the USA. Both are very low in trading fees, okay? And both have never been hacked before either. So very secure historically. My referral links are down below for 15% trading fee discounts. And then finally, the Crypto Academy's Become a Trader 10 unit course has a bull market sale on currently for a limited time. So check that out if you're interested and you want to learn TA, you want to learn how to trade, that's where you can do it. Let's get into the content here without further ado. Guys, historically on Bitcoin, We've had uh, trends that have allowed us to predict when the tops and bottoms will be. Uh, the biggest trend, the overarching umbrella trend of them all, really, is the four-year cycle theory. Uh, that overarching four-year cycle theory trend predicts the top to be in October 2025. Uh, we do have reason to believe, though, unfortunately, that that's not going to be an accurate prediction this time because we're deviating quite a bit from this trend already. We've moved upwards a lot higher, a lot sooner than expected as per some of the micro trends within four-year cycle. And so unfortunately, four-year cycle is not as reliable as it was in the last cycle or in the cycle before that, or even in the cycle before that. Right now, we need to start looking at alternative methods for predicting tops and bottoms on Bitcoin uh, that, that kind of, you know, distance themselves a little bit from the traditional methods of four-year cycle. And so how do we know when the top's in? That's the big question, right? And this is a question I've attempted to answer in multiple videos, but I'm going to show you a unique chart that I haven't showed you before um, for predicting the top, right? Now, this isn't necessarily for predicting the top, but it's for telling you when the top is in so you can de-risk from the market and sell everything before it gets too bad, right? So again, just premising the video, without the overarching trends, that the insightful overarching trends of the four-year cycle telling us when the top will be, we need to find other methods of finding out when the top will be so that we don't get wrecked in a bear market and get stuck holding bags all the way down 60% until we realize, oh wait, this isn't just a normal correction. This is actually a bear market. We need alternative methods, right? Four-year cycle is still valid, but it doesn't really offer us that level of reliability. We need to look at alternative things. Now, one of the things we can look at and I'm going to get into this chart that you may not have seen before in a second. But one of the things we can look at is this trend here as for predicting the top. Okay, so I've got a, a chart right here for that predicts the top. It's not overly reliable though, but I'll look into it right now. And then I have a chart for reacting to the top, which is perhaps a lot better and a lot more reliable. But it doesn't let us have that insight as into when it will actually be. We can only react to when it actually occurs. So we have an historical trend on Bitcoin uh, and basically it's utilizing this line on the price chart in red. Now this line in red is, is a cross cycle line. It's a line that represents the peak of the, uh, the, the dead cap bounce in the bear market on the monthly chart extending right across horizontally. It's also where we see pre-halving corrections stem from. And when we finally get above that line, it only takes a couple of months to break above all-time highs and enter a proper bull market. That line has played out three separate times. Okay, pre-halving corrections stem from it, pre-halving corrections stem from it. We tested it. We didn't quite see the pre-halving correction because of the bullishness of the market, but it was tested and, and, and deemed very valid. Uh, we also see that that red line lines up with the red line on the RSI, the red line on the RSI being 67 on the RSI. And you can see that every time we've tested these red lines of the price chart, for example, here, here, and here, it's lined up with a test of the red line on the RSI, which makes these red lines extremely valid, extremely important to look at, and a very good data point uh, for reference when it comes to predicting tops and bottoms, because it's kind of like a... a, a data point in the middle that we can we can track and see how we're going and right now unfortunately 
We've deviated quite a lot from that data point because generally speaking, as I've said, it leads to pre-halving corrections. What we can see from the RSI is that when we drop below 67 on the RSI, which again lines up to that red line, so it's like the same thing as that red line, but just on the RSI, it takes 1,000 days roughly to get back above it. That happened on two occasions, 2015, 2018. It didn't happen this time. This time it only took 700 days. Bitcoin moved upwards faster than expected. Uh, and so now we do lose a certain degree of validity when it comes to... Um, you know, predicting when Bitcoin will break above that red line in the price chart. We're already above it now. We moved faster. So it does actually put in a, a degree of doubt to the overall prediction that this trend has, which is why I'm going to show you the next chart in a second. But this trend overall, what does it, what does it do? Well, it shows us that, okay, it shows us that these red lines in the price charts line up with the red line in the RSI. And being that the, the red line in the price charts and the RSI chart uh, important lines, important data points that we can cross-reference and cross-check for validity. We can use those lines and data points to try and predict tops and bottoms by adding in this yellow descending line, which has predicted every top in Bitcoin's price history so far, okay, and doing a date range measurement from how long it takes to get above the red line to how long it takes to top out on that yellow line. In 2013, it took 488 days. In 2017, it took 395 days. In 2021, it took 367 days. Now, what you'll notice is that that's a decreasing amount of time each cycle. 488, 395, 367, uh, 65, sorry. It's a decreasing amount of day each, each cycle. So you might be thinking, well, Wolf, how can you make a trend out of that? Well, the trend is actually that there is a decreasing amount of time each cycle. And so if we extrapolate that trend further, we can see, okay, let's do 335 days instead of 365 because it decreases by roughly 30 days each time, or at least it has for the last two data points. And it makes sense to add a decreasing amount of time in the trend because we have a descending resistance line, which means there's less space to move from when we break the 67 level on the RSI and less space space requires less time. So it actually is a valid trend. Uh, and the valid trend predicts that Bitcoin will essentially reach this yellow line on the RSI around December this year. And if we're speaking historically, that would be where we top. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that that's the most convincing thing you've ever heard, because it's certainly not. And I'm certainly not going to be taking it as gospel, but it is something we need to look at. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, it's not the most convincing thing you've ever heard. And because it's not the most convincing thing you've ever heard, it means we can't really rely on it too much. It's just something that's interesting we need to keep looking at. And we need to start relying on other metrics as well. So we've got a predictive method here that says, okay, the top's going to be in December 2024. But we know it's not reliable, ultimately. We know it's a vague indication. Uh, and we have various other predictive methods that we've looked at saying, oh, March 2025, July 2025. So we've got like a six-month period of, of all these theories taking us to different points in, in terms of predictive methods. We need a reactive method. We need to be able to react to the top because the fact of the matter is, unlike previous cycles, we don't know exactly when the top is going to be. Okay, in the last cycle, we knew, we knew for a fact, really. I mean, it, obviously nothing's a fact. We knew for a very good uh, there was a very good chance the top would be in November 2021 due to the four-year cycle theory. We knew there was a very good chance the top would be in November 2022. Uh, the bottom would be in November 2022 due to the four-year cycle theory. And right now, we don't really know for a fact that this four-year cycle will continue because there are dents in the armor at this point. So we can use these predictive methods, but they're not as reliable as what the four-year cycle was. And so we need to be able to use reactive methods as well. Now, what are those reactive methods? What are some of the reactive methods that we can use? We can use this chart here, which you probably have haven't seen too much. Now, first and foremost, we've got two of them in this video, okay? Baseline on the monthly chart RSI. This is a great reactive method, okay? Uh, it's great because it's reliable, but it does have its downfalls as well. So how is it reliable? What we, what we can see very simply, it's extremely simple to use, is that when we get ab above this baseline on the Ichimoku cloud in orange, okay, we enter a bull market. And when we drop below it, we enter a bear market. It's really that simple. Bull market, bear market. Bull market, bear market, bull market, uh, testing for support, testing for support, testing for resistance, uh, you know, all it bounce, bounce, bounce. It, it's very, very reliable. Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Very reliable line here. And it's essentially with a 100% accuracy rate always predicted when the bear markets begin and when the bull markets begin. The problem with this line is that although we can use it and it's going to be helpful for us, 
The problem is by the time we break below this line and confirm a bear market, it's already kind of too late, right? So for example, we only confirmed a bear market by breaking below this line uh, when we were down 55% in 2014. We only did it when we were down uh, you know, 50% in 2018. We only did it when we were down about 50% again in, in 2022. We don't want to have to wait 50% before selling our bags and realizing that the bear market is over because by the time Bitcoin's down 50%, our altcoins are down 75, 80%. That's the reality. So this line, although it's really useful and really good, it's not really that helpful because, you know, it's helpful in a certain way. It's helpful in, in understanding macro trends, but it's not helpful for someone who's holding, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars in, in bags and altcoins because by the time you sell due to this indicator, you're, you've already lost half of that or more. So we need something a little bit more reactive. What can we use? Well, unfortunately, with more reactive things, it becomes less reliable, but we do have something. Uh, and it's it's the monthly chart RSI with the 14 moving average, okay? RSI-based moving average right here. What you'll notice is that when we break above, or but so let's start right here. When we break below the moving average after the first halving, break below the moving average, we enter a bear market. When did that occur? It occurred on the very monthly candle, okay? After the top, okay? So unlike being down 50% with the baseline, we we're only down about 30%, okay? So breaking below that moving average on the monthly RSI, Crossing below it equaled bear market begins. Breaking above it equals bull markets begins. So we broke above it there in 2015. We did that a mere, you know, a mere 30% from the bottom, which is really not much considering how uh, quickly Bitcoin moved back in the day. We started a bull market. We did not break below. We did not cross the RSI line below this moving average until January 2018. What happened in January 2018? That was a month after the top. Okay, so only one month. After the top in 2018, we were down a little bit less than the baseline. One month after the top, as you can see, one month after the top in 2013, both of these uh, monthly RSI crosses, crosses with the moving average predicted the, the bear market began only one month after the top. And, you know, back here in 2015 as well, the bull market began with this cross with no room of error whatsoever. It was a perfect prediction. Uh, over here, 2019, we go into 2019, uh, we cross above this this monthly chart RSI moving average and we, you know, trigger the start of the bull market. That's an excellent buy signal there on the monthly chart. You're only about, you know, 30, well, it's about 60% actually, to be fair, above the bottom, but that's only $5,000 Bitcoin when the bottom was 3,000. That's not too bad. All things considered, it's much more reactive than something like the Ichimoku cloud where if we bring up the Ichimoku cloud again, when did the Ichimoku cloud say we were in a bull market? It said we we're in a bull market all the way here at 8,000, you know, more than, more than you know, uh, six months or, or actually 18 months past the bottom. So, you know, this, this moving average on the RSI has been much more reactive, but unfortunately with something that's more reactive, you see much, much less reliability. That's what we saw exactly during 2020 and 2019. A lot of chop around here, no real clear signals. That is also, to be fair, driven by COVID. Okay, COVID-19 obviously screwed that around a little bit. So I think we can just kind of remove that from the equation. Uh, we, when we finally did get a back, a back above it decisively, we did enter a bull market. And the first leg of the bull market here in April 2021, that was uh, that, that led to a cross below this line. And obviously, we didn't really recover from that in the second leg. So it kind of failed during 2021. But it has been good again here in 2023 because when we got above this, uh, when the RSI line got above 14 moving average, okay, as you can see, it triggered there. We were only at about 23,000 when the bottom was 15,000. So it was, it was quite a good indicator of the start of the bull market. And now we're up, you know, 4x from that point. So I think that, not quite three and a half X. I think that's, um, or three X, I should say, <laughs> maths. I think that this is a much more reactive indicator. The moving average, uh, you know, in the moving average, uh, the, the RSI moving average in yellow, it's the 21 moving average, I believe, or the 14 moving average, I should say, on the monthly chart RSI, seeing uh, death crosses and golden crosses, right? Bullish crosses, bearish crosses with this RSI line, seeing the RSI price drop below the moving average is a, is a bearish cross and it's an ind indicator to sell. Seeing the RSI line go above the moving average is a bullish cross, it's an indicator to buy. Right now we are definitively, decisively above that moving average. And so if we ever do see Bitcoin, which we will eventually uh, drop below that moving average, that will be a clear indication that the bull market is over. And although it's not going to be super amazing, because we'll still be down 30% probably, it's going to be more... Uh, it's going to be more reactive than something like the Ichimoku cloud baseline, which is a very well established way to predict uh, the bear market beginning and the bull market beginning, but it's also very lagging. It lags a lot. This lags a lot less. Uh, so 
you know, both these methods are good. They've both got their, their you know, utility for sure. You know, the fact of the matter is this cycle is going to be a little bit hard to navigate. That's that's the simple reality because we don't really have as much confidence, as much faith in the four-year cycle as we did in previous cycles. So we don't actually really know when the top is going to be. We have vague indications that it's going to be between December and maybe, you know, July next year or, you know, looking at March, April next year. Those are some hot points as well. But there's no real reason to believe that other than the fact that some charts suggest it. So we are going to have to rely, unfortunately, on more reactive indicators. And when we're talking about reactive indicators, there's not too much to look at because a lot of them are lagging. You know, this Ichimoku Cloud Baseline, which we looked at, but it lags so heavily. There's this monthly chart uh, moving average on the RSI, and it, even that lags quite heavily, and it's actually not super, super reliable historically. It, it is, it's got a quite good accuracy rate, but it had that period here in throughout 2019 to 2021 where it just didn't really work too well. We have things, of course, like Pi Cycle Top Indicator, that's okay, I guess. But I mean, if we're considering right now that that didn't even uh, lead to a price cycle top trigger in, in 2021, we didn't even see it trigger in 2021. And 2021, uh, you, you know, that, that means it has the same problems as the RSI line has. It didn't work throughout 2019 to 2021. So price cycle top is, we've got no reason really to believe that that's going to be uh, accurate. It also didn't really, you know, mark the bottom very well. It marked the bottom over here on a monthly candle that ended up closing at 23K. We went down a further, you know, 50%, 40%. So price cycle has been inaccurate. Things like CBBI, that's been inaccurate as well. There's no reason to believe that will work perfectly. The fact of the matter is here, we're in a bit of a crisis on Bitcoin with a lack of data uh, in order, you know, we don't really have what we need to predict when the top will be and all of the reactive methods will lag quite a bit. So we are going to actually, at the end of the day, and this is my final note, my final conclusion, we are going to have to rely pretty heavily on regular TA. I'm talking trend lines, support lines, uh, volume profile. That's really what's going to be the most useful to us. Everything else is very hit or miss. And this is the problem with this cycle. This is the problem with deviating from historical trends. We are left a lot more in the dark than we would have been if we would have just followed the four-year cycle theory. And so although Bitcoin's going up and that's great, it's going up earlier than expected and faster than expected, it's not actually that great from a predictive standpoint because we don't really know, we don't really have the tools available to be very, very accurate in our predictions of when the top will be. And hence, we can't really expect to get uh, perfectly, timed sell, perfectly timed sell points. That's the problem. Uh, because, you know, previously in, in previous markets, we knew when the top was going to be. If we saw time, signs of Bitcoin topping within that date range, you know, within 30 days of that date range, that's probably the top. It's, a, it's your best guess. But now we don't have that best guess. So we're just going to have to try our best here. That's the problem. Uh, we do have, as I said, reactive methods. They're not overly reliable. Predictive methods, not overly reliable. We're going to have to try our best. We're going to have to try and utilize these to the best of our ability while also implementing base level TA, you know, one-on-one -on -one TA, trend lines, diagonal lines, horizontal lines. I think I'll be able to do it. Um, I'm, I'm very confident in my TA capabilities. I think that I'll be able to catch the top probably within 20%. Uh, but, you know, even 20%, it's a big amount, guys. It's a big amount. But unfortunately, there's not really any way we could do much better because we don't really have the trends available. That's the trouble with this cycle. So this is definitely a cycle where, you know, once you see things like Bitcoin dominance, going downwards massively and, and and it's been going downwards for 200 days, 300 days, and you see it start to bottom out, that's when you really need to start taking profits. Even if the top is not exactly in, taking profits along the way is going to be heavily important, especially in this cycle, much more so than last cycle. Uh, you know, in, in the last cycle, I was actually a big advocate for just holding everything until the end uh, for the most part. You know, obviously you can swing trade, but if you've got bags, hold them to the end. And that's exactly what we did. And we had the vast majority of altcoins topping out with Bitcoin in November. And that strategy ended up you know, being very, very useful. This time, we're going to have to adopt a slightly different strategy. Obviously, right now is not the time, in my opinion, at least based on Bitcoin dominance. I don't think it's the time to be taking profits yet at all. Uh, I think we, we're just starting this bull market. Bitcoin dominance hasn't even started to drop yet. That's my topic of yesterday's video. Go ahead and check it out. But when it does start dropping, and it's been dropping for you know over six months, seven months, eight months, that's when you need to start taking profits, even though the TA might suggest we might go higher. We ju just have to accept the fact that we are a little bit more in the dark than usual, and we do need to be probably a bit more conservative than usual. At least that's my opinion. So you guys can do what you want. Sorry for dragging out this video a bit too long. Probably could have gone, got it done in a little bit of a shorter way, but I hopefully, you know, you found the information useful. Again, just one more time here, guys, if you appreciate the content, go ahead and check out VIP. I do all coin trading signals on VIP four to five times a week. Uh, check it out. Very interesting stuff there if you want to make money on altcoins. 
Bing X, BitGet. If you need an exchange, these are the exchanges you can use. 15% trading fee discounts for life down below. And then finally, the Become a Trader 10 unit course, bull market sale. If you want to learn TA, learn how to trade, that's where you can do it. All of those links are down below. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next Bitcoin video.